Hey everybody, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. My name is Bear. It's about damn time. Let's go ahead and try out the abomination. Tortured and reclusive. This man is more dangerous than he seems. The slam. Actually, it seems now apparently all skills are unlocked at level one for new recruits, so that's kind of cool. Did not realize that was a thing, although we admittedly have not recruited anyone for quite some time here. Uh, let's have a look at this, though. This is going to be the most important aspect, I think, of this character. Actually, now that I think about it, hold on a second. Let me prove to myself whether or not what I just said is the case. Because we're going to have to recruit new people anyway to be able to go to any level 1 dungeon. So who do we want? We've already got a lower level Jester. The Plague Doctor's already there. We can't bring a Crusader because he doesn't go well with holy characters. So I guess it's just going to be Hellion, right? It's got to be. Barbaric rage and unrelenting savagery make for a powerful ally. Okay, so that's not the case. I guess it's just for the abomination that he gets all those uh, skills unlocked, but that probably has something to do with the fact that he transforms. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at this. So transforming. As a human, when you use this skill, you change to a beast, you gain blight resistance and more damage. Although, you add stress to your other heroes. And then, as the beast, when you use that on yourself, you change back to a human, you lose speed, but you heal, and other heroes get a stress heal from that. Okay, very interesting. Now, manacles. Uh, I don't know, actually, how to tell which one is going to be a beast skill and which one is a human skill. Maybe it doesn't matter. I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll find out once we get into actual combat. Uh, looks like this is just a... Stun move here. This is going to be Beast Bile, which will inflict Blight at a 100% base chance early on, which is pretty good. And it lowers the target's Blight resistance as well. Absolution is a stress heal and a heal, which is pretty damn nice. Uh, that's You can only use that on yourself, apparently, though. Rake is a nice melee skill. Inflicts more damage from Rake if you use it more. Okay, so you want to stack damage from that if you can use it over and over again. That's pretty cool. Rage is a crit boost. Or no, that's just a simple melee skill, okay. And then melee from slam. Moves you forward one. Lower damage, slightly higher crit chance, and can knock back the enemy. As well as give them uh, lower dodge and speed. Very good, okay. That looks pretty damn useful. I'm excited to try him out, and let's go ahead and grab a grave robber to sort of round this out. Those with a keen eye. Gold gleams like a dagger's point. So, what would be the preferred position for this guy? Probably number two, right? He's got a couple of these that you can only use in the middle, and then the rest of them seem to be more frontline skills. So, yeah, let's keep him in position two. That seems like the best option. Which would mean that we'll have a frontline Hellion, and then in rank three, we'll have our Grey Robber, followed by the Plague Doctor, all the way in the back. Let's just make sure we can't do any small upgrades for this team right now. It's really not looking like this is going to be an incredibly good crew, but this is mostly just to test out the abomination and see how he, she, it is going to fare. Hughes is its name. Hughes. I guess that's not really that weird. I was trying to read it before. Hey, us. He, Hughesy. There we go. Hughesy and the News. Yeah, they're my favorite band referenced in film starring Christian Bale. It's a very specific niche that I've gotten into lately. Okay, this is probably good. Let's just check the sanitarium real quick. We've got a couple of people that have disease, right? Yeah, we gotta go to the medical ward for some of these guys. Face B, I know, has got, you know, the spotted fever is pretty gnarly, and then Savigny with Scavi. Although I think Roussel actually has a worse disease, doesn't she? Yeah, the bulimia, bulimia and the Red Plague. Probably worth getting rid of ahead of Savigny's mere scurvy. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, come back with a real disease, you stupid Vestal. How about the sanitarium here? Is there anything I want to get rid of? Necromania is a new one. That's the one fascinated with corpses. Although she's already committed to something else. I uh, might as well do something like Tuckered out here, right? I've got enough money to probably make this worthwhile. Let's go ahead and do that. And lock in... How about some accuracy? That seems pretty good. Yeah, accuracy to range skills. He's got a lot of range skills, so that's pretty nice. And then let's go for... Hyromania is not that bad. Slow draw I'd like to get rid of. That speed loss can be pretty devastating. Uh, and then we don't need to lock anything else in. Let's go ahead and get rid of slow draw on him. It's been there for a while, clearly, with the lock-in. There we go. 
And one last one, why not use the the services to their full extent? But we will go ahead and commit Carteret to some cheaper stress removal here and then let everybody else sort of just sort themselves out. Except for Stanley, who's got a lot of problems. And needs some help in the form of whips. That's probably good, I'm satisfied with that. But now, one last check for the Nomad Wagon, because we do want to make sure we've got some really good trinkets for this crew, because that's going to be basically the only big advantage that I've got. And I think we'll be okay. Let's check this uh, camping skills, actually. Just to make sure. Let's go ahead and just unlock all of them. I don't know why we wouldn't just do that, but let's do see what the Abomination has available. Anger management increases stress by 20, but reduces everyone else's by 8. Psych up is 25% damage. That's pretty freaking sweet. I like that. Speed boost for himself, uh, resistances boost, encourage, wound care, and pep talk. Okay. Pretty damn good, though. Any self buffs that are worthwhile are not to be frowned upon for camping skills. Let's just go ahead and unlock everything. We'll, uh, we'll sort through these in a minute here, too, just to make sure that we've got everything we need. But I do want to make sure that I'm going to be able to actually do something here. Ah, oh, see, yeah, we got the sunken crew. The only option we've got is the weld, which is fine, I guess. I mean, this is the experimental round for the Abomination anyway, so I suppose it doesn't really matter where we go. Although I would like to go to the Gove, but whatever. We'll take it. So, position two, position three, position four, and position one. I think we'll be okay. Again, though, we gotta make sure the trinkets are well set. And let's go ahead and lock in the camping skills we know we want to bring, too. Actually, this is short, so never mind. No, it's not gonna matter. <laughs> that was the one thing I was checking for, was that it's gonna be a medium or long dungeon, but sadly, that is not going to make a difference. So let's check in with the trinkets and make sure we got the right stuff here. Probably not gonna be going in low torchlight, so I don't think the Hell's Hairpin is a good idea. Let's sort by, uh, well, let's make sure we unequip everything and then sort by character class restriction again. Uh, she's only got Hell's Hairpin, and then the double-edged pendant is the last... Oh, well, no, I guess we could go with the bleeding pendant. Yeah, you know what? We are... We're gonna do that. We're gonna go with the bleeding pendant. We're gonna allow the Hellion to, uh... To focus a little bit more on that. Although, we do have to unlock this, too, don't we? Yeah, that was the last thing. That's what it was! You silly biscuit. I gotta go in here and give these guys some moves. Some skills. Yes! Give them variety. Give them character. It builds charisma and self-esteem. And he's already unlocked. Okay, cool. There we go. That's more like it. So, one, two, three, and four. Sweet. And let's just make sure, again, we give him the right stuff. And we're going to give her, I think, the Ancestor's Pen again. I sort of like that combination. Extra bleed chance and more chance for crits. It's pretty good for me. Uh, the Abomination. So what are his strengths? I suppose he's a pretty big damage dealer. Mostly looks out for himself, it seems. He's got the self-heal and stress reduction. He's got this this thing here that, of course, does not bode well for the rest of the team. Uh, stun chance bonus would be good for him. Yeah, that would probably be pretty effective. Although we could just give him damage and probably get about the same effect. He's got a good mix, I think, of ranged and melee skills too, right? No, he's got- well, he's got two ranged. Yeah, okay, so there's a- there's a decent- decent mixture there. How about some dodge chance? I don't know, let's maybe just go with a legendary focus combo. That seems like it's gonna be pretty okay for him. Is this the accuracy? Although the legendary bracer is not really gonna be- This combo doesn't really work very well anymore, does it? Yeah. <laughs> That's not really the synergy I, I used to have with that. But it's still very good. That's not to say that it's not a, a good set of equipment, because this is going to be quite nice. He's going to be really slow, but I think this will work out still. Now let's go with the Grave Robber. She has probably got a couple of things, at least, that I haven't used for quite some time. The Raider's Talisman, for example, is not bad. Trap Disarm and Scouting Chance. Not really things that I tend to prioritize, but I think it could work pretty well. So let's go with this. And I like the Lucky Talisman as well. Dodge chance, accuracy to range skills, which are most of her attacks. And stress damage. Unfortunately boosted up for her, I think. Yeah, okay. That's the trade-off we make there. Uh, Shadow Fade, not gonna be using that too much, so let's go ahead and switch this to Throne Dagger. Give her Poison Darts, Flashing Daggers, and Pickaxe may be okay, but Lunge might be better, considering we probably have to give me some options as far as shifting the party around, should I need to. And then finally... I think we're looking okay here. 
Let's give the Plague Doctor. I think she's got a couple of decent options for herself. Yeah, Blasphemous Vial is a very good one, so we definitely want to take that. And the Stun Skill chance, again, is decent. But let's go maybe with one of our Ancestral Trinkets for her. Maybe some Dodge chance. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. This is a short mission, but you wouldn't think it with the amount of preparation involved here. But I think we're going to be really well off as a result. So let's just make sure I bring a good variety of goodies. A couple of keys. Eh, just one key. A couple of herbs, though. And then these and a full stack of torches. Let's do it! Finally get to try out the Abomination. I've been really excited to try this guy. Really wondering how the uh, the transformation is going to work mid-combat, but... Well, you know, with turn-based systems, I guess it's not really going to be that confusing, but... Still, quite unique. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. Oh boy. Well, this is a good start. Pretty straightforward layout again. We do have to go back to the... To the very, very back, unfortunately. Because we do want to make sure we don't want to go all the way back there at the end of things! As you know, I've come to hate. Breakthrough. Okay, this is not the start I was looking for. Do I want to move her forward, though, or should I just stick with this for the remainder of the fight? Masterfully executed. Okay, well that compliment certainly leads me to believe I made the right decision. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. Yeah, I think Wayne knows what's up. We're taking care of business now. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, two down. Unfortunately, one health away from taking him out, but we get the dodge as well. Please tell me we get a full party dodge. No. All right. A little too much to ask for. This is finally the Abomination's turn, and now... Okay, so let's see. So when he's in human form, I guess these are the three skills he has available. No, no, oh, wait, okay, hold on. Let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and do this right now. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That doesn't take his turn. Oh, interesting. But you can only transform once per turn, it seems. But now that we've done this, we have these three options available. The Slam, Rage, and Rake, which is so sweet. Uh, let's go for this one, considering this is gonna wipe these guys out. And I can't really target him. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. That's very good. All right, we got options for targeting this back line here. Let's go with the play grenade. And I believe her thrown dagger will be able to reach back there, right? Yes, indeed. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Indeed it does, Wayne. As victories mount, so too will resistance. He does have to transform back to human form at the end as well. Very curious. Okay. I think I'm gonna like this thing. I think I'm gonna be a fan of the Abomination. Breakthrough would uh, probably get us the kill here. Noxious Blast is definitely an option. These four in particular is very interesting. I didn't really expect too much out of it, but now I'm starting to be a little bit more optimistic. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Okay, then. Just tell me this is an empty room, and then let's just go have some fun with all these goodies up here. Yeah, buddy, all right. Look at that. I didn't even realize we got a full scout. When did that happen? Holy shit. And there's one fight. Wow. All right, well. Thank you. <laughs> How did I miss that? That was just happening underneath my nose. Oh, and by the way, Bear, we've given you the easiest possible dungeon ever. For your first abomination run. Really taking pity on me, finally. I appreciate that. Come on now. There we go. There's a reason we wore that trinket, lass. Best be using it. Pop those torches, too. And off we go. All right. Let's go accomplish the objective in one fell swoop. Shall we? Why is my voice cracking so much? I'm just so excited! Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption. Malformed with misintent. Food's looking good, too. This is all just... really going according to whatever plan I apparently had set forth. 
Very nice. All right, let's 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 think about this, though. So, we do have to switch her skill set. I've totally forgotten about that. We gotta give her the If It Bleeds for the uh, sake of the bleeding pendant that we've been using. But, having Iron Swan right now is actually pretty nice, because I would like to take these two out before anything else. Oh, really unfortunate there, though. Okay, Play Grenade is certainly a good option. They do have a decent Blight resistance, but I think it's worthwhile, especially considering she only needs to deal one damage to this guy to take him down. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Could stack Blight on this guy. Beast's Bile. Or I could transform again. We've got the stress to spare, so I suppose this is about the time to do it, right? When we, uh, when we don't really have to worry too much about adding 10 to 12 stress to each party member, it probably benefits me more to transform when I can. Uh, let's go for... how about the slam? That sounds okay. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. And I don't know how much of a benefit we get from moving him up to the front. Probably none, considering these two are more or less interchangeable. But of course now he's sort of limited if we send him back to human form. Because I believe most of his skills require him being in position two in that. So that's very curious. We have to think about that moving forward. Very nice damage from that one. That worked out perfectly. And now, uh, this I suppose is my most powerful individual attack. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have any added benefit apart from dealing a good amount of damage. Hopefully, I can land this for the potential kill. I think we're one damage away, though, son of a bitch. But we can do that and miss completely. How fun! Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope, actually, if I didn't have to do anything. Just give me a knife that slaughters my enemies for me, please. Here you go. Great is the bile that bows in their bones on its own. This expedition at least promises success. It does indeed. Well, let's keep going. I want to try out the, uh, this here abomination some more. See what all the hoobla's about. Got a couple more fights here. I might as well make some moolah while I'm out here, too. Moolah for the hoobla! That's my motto. We are getting some simple stuff here, too. I'll say that. These fights have not been that challenging. Flashing dagger is pretty good here, too. Give me that crit. Oh, shit. Breakthrough is nice. Noxious Blast on the Nasher, who's already taken his turn. So if we manage to get speed on our side, we emerge victorious. So he's got, yeah, he's got one move that works in rank one, so clearly it's to my advantage to keep him in position two. But, we can always do this, but then again, I think I'm adding really unnecessary stress when I do that. Especially in that circumstance. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. But it is really cool that he just auto-transforms back at the end, and that does reduce stress a little bit. So I wonder if... Man, it would be interesting to discover whether or not it's worth it to just transform every fight regardless. Because I, I can see that being the case with this guy. It's very interesting. But I think we're gonna get out of here pretty much untouched. Unfortunately, we needed three shovels, though. An indefatigable purpose. Wow, yeah, okay, that totally sucks. <laughs> Man, that is... That's a lot of stress. Oh, and a madman. Whoa! Oh, God, okay! Holy crap, out of nowhere we have a very serious stress problem here. This is a, a brand new enemy, too. This is cool. All right, so now we have to be worried about transforming, unfortunately. Damn, that's rough. Uh, I think I still need to do it, though. Just because these guys can start stacking bleed damage really quickly. Oh, shit. Uh, can I afford to... Uh, I think I gotta do it. I'm gonna start taking these guys out. Wow, they're really close. Boom. Okay, that was super helpful already. I think that alone might have been worth it, just to be able to take out two of those Nashers, and then... 
If I land this, it does two damage and then Blight will kill. If it lands. Yes. Good. Okay, that's awesome. And now Wicked Hack for the Madman. Shit! He's down. That's good. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Oh god, this is bad. I know, right? Fuck me. The walls close in. The shadows whisper of conspiracy. Come on, Bonville. We know you just got here, but we thought more of you. Oh god, this got really bad. <laughs> Remember how well off we were? Oh, I feel kind of bad for this guy. I probably should bandage too, but whatever. All right, he's down. Take him out. Well struck. Hey, a little bit more stress relief. Okay. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. Well, that was awfully discouraging, wasn't it? Let's go get the remainder of our valuables and get the fuck out of here. Because I am getting all they see fit to give me in this in this realm. You can go ahead and disarm that for us too, thank you. You sweet thing. Oh boy, no shovels here either. This is a risky proposition, but that's her job, isn't it? To dig those up? Not doing too great at it anymore. Alright, that's a clear dungeon, but at what cost? The agents of pestilence will yet be driven from our woods. Apparently the cost of nearly $7,000. Over $7,000. Okay, we got that much. And some heirlooms, because Lord knows we needed those. Two resolve experience points, so at least now they'll all be a little bit better off for next time, but still. Ugh. That was rough. The degeneracy of the hamlet is nothing, I fear, when compared to the condition of surrounding acres. Good progress on most of our characters, though, at least. That feels nice. Oh, jeez. Well. <laughs> the abomination is fun, at least. We know that much now. Hopefully we'll be able to level them up at some point and get them out in some of these higher-ranked missions. For now, though, thank you very much for watching this episode of Darkest Dungeon. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. Appreciate that a lot. I'll see you next time.